Muchachos, the muchachas, Glenn Maxwell trial day 12. This is the final day for witness testimonies, as well as Glenn Maxwell has stated that she is not taking the stand and the defense case has rested. Shoo, that was a very quick trial. This was allocated six weeks and in the I would call this two and a half week, but really this is the third week of the trial. Everything seems to rest and it looks to be that they are moving to cross the finish line before Christmas. There's a lot to go through today. Stay right there. We're going to go through it. Folks, the world is literally becoming unhinged. Supply chains are breaking down. The critical shortages are showing up left and right. People can sense that the other shoe is about to drop. They're ordering emergency food like crazy, which means you should too before you can't get any. I'm talking about high quality emergency food you can get from My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's leading preparedness company and they've served millions of American families. Now they want to help you by giving you $100 off their best selling three month emergency food kit. This food stays fresh for up to 25 years in proper storage. So it'll be there when you need it. And the meals in this food kit average over 2,000 calories per day. So don't wait. Don't go to prepare with Natalie dot com and claim your three month emergency food kit while you still can. You'll save one hundred dollars per kit if you act now. That's preparewithnatley.com. There continues to be a surge of orders. Make sure yours is one of them. Preparewithnatley.com. All right, muchachos y muchachas, as I've stated before, <clears throat> this has been a very quick trial and there it seems to be watered down. There seems to be not a lot of density to this trial. But with that being said, I will report absolutely everything that comes about. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So we begin by let's let's go over some overnight details that came out out of yesterday's trial. So Coming from the New York Times, after the jury was sent home late Thursday in the sex trafficking trial of Glenn Maxwell, the judge appeared to be ready to ask Miss Maxwell if she understood her right to testify in her own defense and whether she planned to do so. Her defense lawyer, Bobby Sternheim, then replies for her and says, Judge, I would like to ask that we would wait until tomorrow, please. But the mid-morning on Friday, the issue had not risen, and Ms. Maxwell's lawyers proceeded to present witnesses on the second day of the defense's case. It continued to appear unlikely that she would testify and offer the jury her side of the story. Ms. Maxwell's lawyers also made it clear that they could rest their case as early as Friday after the judge, Allison Nathan, appeared skeptical of the defense request to put the case on hold while her lawyers tracked down two witnesses. Ms. Maxwell's defense team had hoped to locate a witness identified as Kelly, who has not responded to subpoenas, and another witness from England, which would have required extra time. But prosecutors argued that Ms. Maxwell's defense had already had time to plan its case. Glenn Maxwell has been in custody since summer of 2020. The judge appeared to agree. You have your witnesses or your rest, Judge Nathan said, sounding a note of exasperation. Glenn Maxwell had been charged with recruiting, grooming, and helping Jeffrey Epstein sexually abuse underage girls. She has pleaded not guilty to the charges. Okay, with that being said, let's go to the beginning of the recap, and then we're going to go straight to the transcripts because there's already stuff that's not covered by the mainstream outlets. Day 12, Maxwell's defense team said yesterday they could wind down their case as soon as today, but they need to call a witness at the start of next week. Closing arguments are scheduled for Monday. The defense team has made no indication that Maxwell will take stand in her own defense, but Judge Nathan said Thursday that she intends to inform her of her right to do so today. Maxwell team said Thursday that they intend to call a trio of women. Eva, Michelle, and Kelly before the end of the trial, but Judge Nathan has not made a public ruling if she'll allow their testimony. And if you guys need to catch up again, you guys can always go to my videos that I have recapped on this entire case since day one. So let's go straight to the transcripts. This is Matthew Russell Lee from Inner City Press, who has been on the scene of the trial since day one, transcribing it go by go. All right. 
beginning. Judge Nathan, I'm letting in the documents about residents versus ownership. If you weren't, you might have a point. Is this deposition transcript new to you? Maxwell's lawyer responds, she is deposed in a slip and fall case. Judge Nathan then says, you'll provide the transcript. Judge Nathan then says, I have a rule. You have your next witness or you rest. If otherwise, the case closes today, it closes today. Continued on. Maxwell's lawyer then says, also, if the marshals can produce another witness, we've subpoenaed the other witness from the UK. If they will just, uh, just stipulate it, stipulate to it, there'd be no review. <clears throat> U.S. attorney then says the subpoenaed witness, Kelly, we have no idea what she'd say. No stip. Judge Nathan then says there are also some 40 prior inconsistent statements. My colleague, Judge Kaplan, has helpfully set forth in the standard. He's the judge with the Jouffre versus Prince Andrew before him, which Inner City Press is also reporting on. Judge Nathan then says Annie said she didn't remember the chef being there on the Zorro Ranch. Continued on. But that it made sense to her, so not inconsistency, and the amount of horseback riding, is it a collateral issue? Maxwell's lawyer then says, I think impeachment is for the truth, not of the matter asserted. Judge Nathan then says, that's the way too metaphysical for me to handle for right now. Maxwell's lawyer then says, we'll have a law enforcement witness and we'll like to ask leading questions. Judge Nathan then says, truth comes out on direct. Start with that. Maxwell's lawyer then says, I want to get to the absence of evidence, the lack of GPS given the age of the allegations. Then again, it also seems that, you know, the Maxwell lawyers are always trying to undermine the testimonies and the evidence that has been presented. Continued on, Maxwell's lawyer Everdell says, I want to ask the agent that the complaint was first on one time frame, then more recent with Carolyn. I think that's relevant. Attorney USA then says the court has already ruled on this. The path of the investigation, let's let them raise it in closing. Judge Nathan says, who's the first defense witness today? Maxwell's lawyer then says, first special agent Jason Richards. Then we would have had Agent Young, then Eva Dubin. Continued on. Okay. Jury is finally called in at 10.30 a.m., an hour late. All rise. 10.30 a.m. That's an hour into the trial. Again, guys, I've been saying this. The fact that they keep delaying and it, it, people are late, you know, it just it's very telling that this trial is just very speedy and very watered down. This is just my opinion, to be honest with you. Okay, continued on. Witness is agent Jason Richards. Maxwell's Palooka says, where are you based? And he says, Miami, before Palm Beach. Palooka says, let's turn to 2006. Richards says, I was in unit PV-2. We investigated Epstein. Palooka said, did you interview Carolyn? Don't say your last name. Agent Richards said, I did. Palooka says, did you recall Carolyn saying she obtained Epstein's number from a phone book that and that Epstein returned her call? Richard says, if that's what's in the 302 report. Palooka says, no further questions. Cross. Attorney USA says, do you show your 302s to those you speak to? Richard says, no. Judge Nathan says, defense may call its next witness. Maxwell's lawyer says, Agent Young, was your partner Detective Burns? Agent Young then says, yes, we both checked the 302. Maxwell's lawyer then says, you just heard Miss Comey's questions to Agent Richards. 302s are not transcripts, right? Young says, they are not. Maxwell's lawyer then says, you interviewed Annie Farmer about the boots, right? Agent Young says, yes, the boots were obtained by the law enforcement this year. I don't remember which month. Maxwell's lawyer then says, read this. Young says, in the beginning, Jane would be with her mother and brothers at the Epstein house. Maxwell's lawyer says, I want to turn to page seven. You wrote, Jane did not recall specific abuse that may have occurred in New Mexico. Maxwell's lawyer then says, just to emphasize, the boots were discussed recently. 
Young says yes. Cross, examination. Attorney USA, the prosecution team then says, what did you do before? Young says, I interviewed children about child abuse. And then they go to sidebar. Agent Amanda Young sits in the plexiglass witness box in dark blue shirt, black jacket, their back. Judge Nathan says jurors will disregard the statement about Agent Young's previous job interviewing children. Agent USA says, did Jane need more than one meeting to say what happened? Maxwell's lawyer then says, objection, beyond the scope. Attorney USA then continues. I'll try another way. Who was there for the interviews? Maxwell's lawyer then says, objection, beyond the scope. I didn't ask about this. Redirect. Maxwell's lawyer says, you use these notes with the grand jury, right? Young says, some of them. Maxwell's manager says, did you show her the 302s? Young says, no, it's not ethical. It's not appropriate. Maxwell's lawyer then says, you don't record them. Young said, Agent Young says, only those in custody, not victim slash witness. Maxwell's lawyer says, are you familiar with the DOJ obtaining evidence protocols? Attorney USA objects. Judge Nathan says, overruled. Then Maxwell's lawyer says, I have a document. I can show it. <clears throat> they go to sidebar again. The witness says, I am Eva Anderson. I also go by Eva Anderson Dubin. I live in NYC. I'm 60. Eva's, I'm sorry, Maxwell's lawyer says, are you married to Glenn Dubin? Eva says, yes. 28 years. We have three children, 27, 25, and 20. Maxwell's lawyer then says, gender. Eva says, female, male, and female. I thought that, never mind. Maxwell's lawyer then says, what does Mr. Dubin do for employment? Eva responds, he is self-employed. Let me go to the recap really quick, just so you guys get some sort of overview. All right, so before we go to the transcripts, let's go here. Eva Dubin, she was just called in the transcripts. Maxwell's defense attorneys intend to call Eva Dubin. Jeffrey Epstein's former longtime girlfriend and one time Miss Sweden to testify as part of their defense in the accused social light. Dubin stated, uh, I'm sorry, Dubin dated Epstein for more than a decade, starting in the early 1980s in what is believed to be his longest relationship. Earlier in the trial, Maxwell's defense attorney, Christian Everdell, showed a photo of the pregnant Dubin and one of Epstein's longtime pilots to, uh, uh, I'm sorry, to one of Epstein's longtime pilots. The defense team had been trying to undermine testimony from Maxwell accuser Carolyn, who said on the stand that she saw a photo of the accused Madame naked and pregnant. Continued on. Eva Anderson Dubin, Jeffrey Epstein's one-time long-term girlfriend, was questioned by defense attorney Jeffrey Paluca about her and her family's relationship with the pedophile financier and the beginning of her testimony. Dubin said that after she split from Epstein in the early 90s, she remained close to him and her children viewed him as somewhat akin to an uncle. They called him Uncle F., she said that her kid's relationship with Epstein. She added that she never witnessed Epstein engage in sexual abuse with a child from 1994 to 2004. The lifetime listed in Maxwell's indictment. Dubin and S Epstein, oh, I'm sorry, it's... Uh, Okay, so th then they go into testimony. So let's let's start with this first. So Eva Dubin, she introduces herself. She introduces uh, details about her family, and we continue on. Eva says, I went to medical school in Stockholm, then UCLA, the Lenox Hill Hospital in NYC. Maxwell's lawyer said, did you know Mr. Epstein? Eva said, we dated off and on from 1983 until 1991. Now, one detail that I want you guys to notice is the UCLA. And I know that it came out earlier in the trial that one of the witnesses, and I, I can't remember if she was a witness accuser or just a witness, but actually, I think it was a witness accuser. But they, uh, she actually testified that 
there were some sort of movements or logistics of her attending UCLA. And I remember specifically that there was some sort of, you know, just point out by this particular journalist that, oh, I wonder if he got her in, in UCLA, you know, by Varsity Blues type tax tactics. Continued on. Maxwell's lawyer, did you ever witness any sexual contact between Mr. Epstein and then Attorney USA, the prosecution team, objects? Another sidebar. Maxwell's lawyer then says, let me show you some photographs under seal. Is one person, Mr. Epstein, and another one of your children? Eva says, yes, it's the 20. I've never seen this picture before. Maxwell's lawyer then says, let me ask you about flight records. And uh, the journalist notes that they're mostly redacted. Judge Nathan says, I'll give the jurors their mid-morning break. Jurors leave and the witness steps out. Judge Nathan says, if there's something inaccurate in the media, writ large, like a blog post. Judge Nathan says, I sustained the government's objection to asking about the published flight logs under 401 and 403. Now we'll take our break soon, then continued on. <clears throat> jury is back Maxwell's lawyer then says let's look at GX662R the redacted flight logs of Dave Roberts can you see it Dr. Dubin Judge Nathan says can we make sure it's redacted if so it may be published on the screen flight with J.E. Eva Anderson and Miss Frances Jardine Maxwell's lawyer says do you remember Frances Jardine Eva says, I remember Frances. I didn't know her last name. Maxwell's lawyer says, you knew Mr. Epstein was dating her. Eva says, yes. Maxwell's lawyer says, I'll show you sealed exhibit GX12. And now, only for the witness and the court, unredacted exhibit 662. Nothing shown on screen. Eva says, I recognize Sophie Biddle, a massage therapist, and see my husband's name. Maxwell's lawyer says, without saying the name that we're not saying, do you see it on the list? Eva says, yes. Maxwell's lawyer says, have you ever been in group sexual encounter with Jane? Eva says, I have not. Maxwell's lawyer says, that's all I have. Judge Nathan says, Miss Mo. All right, let's go to the recap. Just to... Let me just exit out that. All right, here we go. Eva Dubin and former Epstein employee Michelle Healy said they were never involved in group sex or group sexualized massages with Epstein and Maxwell accuser Jane. Absolutely not. Both Dubin and Healy responded when asked by defense attorneys if they were involved in group sexualized massages with Epstein and Jane. Jane had told investigators that women named Eva and Michelle participated in sexualized massages that she was lured into at Epstein's Palm Beach mansion when she was underage. Jane did not mention last names of the women. Prosecutors made the point that neither Dubin or Healy knew every woman Epstein interacted with from 1994 to 2004, highlighted their common names to poke holes in the defense's case. Quoted, are you the only person named Eva in the whole wide world? Assistant U.S. Attorney Allison Moe asked Dubin, who responded that she is not. No, dumb question. All right, bringing it back to the transcripts, I'm just going to read out the last few lines from the testimony of Eva Dubin. Cross-examination, Attorney USA then says, are you the only Eva in the whole wide world? Maxwell's lawyer says, objection on relevance. Judge Nathan says, overruled. Attorney USA Mo then says, did you ever discuss with Mr. Epstein his relationship with Ms. Maxwell? Maxwell's lawyer says, hearsay. Judge Nathan says, sustained. Wait, I'm sorry, what? Did you ever discuss with Mr. in relationship with Maxwell? Uh, hearsay. All right, whatever. Attorney USA Mo then says, with respect, do you have issues with your memory? Maxwell's lawyer says this does not need to be discussed. Attorney USA Mo says nothing further, no redirect. Judge Nathan says the defense may call its next witness. It's Michelle Healy. She says, I'm 47. I live in Dallas as a housewife. My husband is an architect. My system, Shannon, system? I think he meant sister. Shannon lives in Albuquerque. I grew up in Long Island, New York from 74 to 99. Menninger then says, which is Maxwell's lawyer, where did you work in 1996? Healy said, Jeffrey Epstein and company. Healy said, I went to Zorro Ranch. My sister was working there. 
Maxwell's lawyer said, were you ever involved in any group sexualized massages with Jane? Healy said, absolutely not. Cross-examination comes into play. Attorney USA Comey says, are you the only Michelle in the world? Michelle Healy says, I hope not. Attorney USA then says, never flew on Epstein's plane? Healy said, no. Attorney USA said, nothing further. And then there's a lunch break. All right, let's go back to the recap. So apparently Maxwell will not take the stand. McGlenn Maxwell said in court that she will not testify in her own defense as her trial wound down Friday afternoon. Quoted, Your Honor, the government has not proven its case beyond a reasonable doubt, so there is no need for me to testify, Maxwell told Judge Allison Nathan. Just prior to her make, taking, I'm sorry, making the statement, Judge Nathan asked Maxwell and her attorney to stand so she could explain her rights to testify in her own defense. I want to make sure you understand you have the right to testify in your own defense, Nathan told Maxwell. The deci decision to testify or not is your decision. After Maxwell responded, Nathan then asked her to clarify that she does not intend to testify. Your Honor, that is correct, Maxwell responded. All right. All right. Transcripts. Judge Nathan says, I always say I have so many bridges to cross. I cross the bridge that is in front of me. Maxwell's lawyer says we want to put in property records about Stanhope, Muse, too. They are self-authenticating. Judge Nathan says, what do we have after lunch? Maxwell's lawyer says, we'll try to work out the other steps. Judge Nathan says, so no more defense witnesses. I'm going to spend my remaining lunch hour reviewing Kelly. Attorney USA says, if not Monday morning, it's too late. Judge Nathan says, it'll be a long break for the jury. Try to confer now out to Foley Square is what the journalist says. <clears throat> So the jury is still not back at 242. Judge Nathan said she intends to ask Glenn Maxwell whether she intends to testify. Now Maxwell is talking at length with her lawyer, Bobby Sternheim, and others. Judge Nathan has returned, and Attorney USA Comey says that we have reached stipulations and we have to wrap up the case today. Judge Nathan says how long to read the stips. Attorney USA, the prosecution team, says 10 to 15 minutes. Menninger says, we ask you to take notice of the 1996 case before Second Circuit Judge Chen. Judge Nathan says, you've given Judge Chen an early promotion. Menninger says, the U.S. Le uh, leased a building to Epstein and Ben Iran's consultant. Uh, uh, that's just a side note. Inner City Press is going to look up the case, and he looks up the case right here. You guys can screenshot if you want to look it up later. Judge Nathan continued, I am sustaining the objection given the posture of the case at the time it was a summary judgment. Attorney USA says, in the old deposition of Epstein, the government's goal wasn't what it is here to determine where he was living there or on 9 East 71st Street. Maxwell's lawyer says Jane says Epstein was living in 9 East 71st on 1994, but this case says different. Judge Nathan says it's not coming in, and I heard no arrest warrant for Kelly. L Maxwell's lawyer says no need to arrest Kelly Bolino. Uh, Attorney USA then says no government rebuttal case. Now, allocution. Judge Nathan says, Miss Maxwell, please rise. The decision to testify is your, uh, I'm sorry, the decision to testify or not is your decision. Do you understand? Maxwell replies by herself, Your Honor, the government had not proved its case behind, uh, behind, I'm sorry, beyond a reasonable doubt, so there is no need to testify. Now stipulations are being read into record, including Annie Farmer's boots were seized by the FBI on June 29th, 2021, also when the Lion King opened, and that Dominique Hip, uh, Hippolyte would testify that the Palm Beach School maintains records. Maxwell's lawyer, at this time the defense rests, Attorney USA, the U.S. has no further case. Judge Nathan says, jurors, you'll hear closing arguments, then instruct you on the law, and you'll begin deliberations. Monday, I ask that we start at 9 a.m., and it's possible he'll go to 6. Judge Nathan continues, 
continue following my instructions, no communications with each other or anyone about the case. Keep an open mind until summations and my instructions. Be cautious out there. I want to see everyone back here Monday at nine. All rise. Jury leaves. Judge Nathan says, I'll get your draft of the charge by 6 p.m. and we'll meet here at 9 a.m. for the charging conference. Attorney USA then says, who should we reach out to about logistics? Judge Nathan says, we'll have some staff over here over the weekend for the charging conference. Right. All right. So let's just go jump back to the recap here. Defense rest. Glenn Maxwell's defense team rested their case Friday afternoon, soon after the disgraced social lie said in court that she would not testify in her own defense. At this time, the defense rests. Attorney Bobby Sternheim told jurors, jurors, closing arguments are scheduled for Monday, which will be followed by Judge Nathan charging the jury. The defense called a number of witnesses in their case over the two days, including former employees and an ex-girlfriend of Jeffrey Epstein. Through their testimony, Maxwell's attorneys sought to undermine statements made by accusers in court who were called by prosecutors. Two defense witnesses who testified Friday said they did not witness Epstein ever abuse underage girls under uh, during the 10-year period included in Maxwell's indictment. So, with that being said, muchachos y muchachas, <laughs> I mean, there are pictures, there are so many things that are out there that are photographic, videographic evidence. And yet the uh, the witness accusers called by I'm sorry, not the accusers scratch that. Sorry, retract the witnesses called by the defense team. They attest more so on the side of Epstein. They didn't even they didn't even testify on the Glenn Maxwell part. But Epstein at the extremity that he did not abuse underage girls in the 10 year gap that is under trial. I have no words. I uh, honestly, I have no words. You guys know my feelings on this, my opinions. Uh, this is just, uh, it, it went so fast and it is going so fast. So I guess on Monday, we uh, learn what the closing arguments are. And with that being said, we will meet back on Monday as I recap the closing arguments. Muchachos y muchachas, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on the actual uh, witnesses that the defense called and if you think that they're truthful or not. This is all, this is just crazy. This is 2021 though. Are we surprised? No, we're not. Guys, I love you so much. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. Thank you for referring people to my channel. And if you can, please drop this link to all of your chats, Telegram, Facebook, Discord, WhatsApp, uh, what else is out there? Uh, Telegram, did I say that already? Yeah, just drop it in the chat. Let them know that, hey, this is one of the only few coverages that are out there, and I appreciate your support. I love you. Please take care. Have a great weekend. If I don't make a video between here and Monday, I will see you then. Bye-bye.